Hello, friends. We have a short message from our friends at Lego. Where will your creativity take you tonight? Explore the wonders of nature with Lego Friends Botanical Garden. Your imagination can build and play as you create blossoming flowers and exotic plants. Let your curiosity unwind as you build and watch butterflies fly around with this immersive set. With three Lego characters included, you and your friends will explore and learn about all the joys of the garden and the beauty of its plant and flower species. As you build, unbuild, and rebuild, you'll find new ways to engage and play with this interactive scene featuring garden accessories for a fully displayable scene. Find joy and happiness in the fun of play with Lego Friends Botanical Garden. Visit lego.com for more details. Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to Grace in London, Ontario, and hello to Luna. Happy belated birthday to Eli and Reed, identical twins who turned seven on November 11th. Happy birthday to Josephine Kerr, who was turning seven on November 13th. Happy birthday to Ryland from Andover, Minnesota, who is turning four on November 13th. Happy birthday to Gracie Rose, who is turning four on November 13th. Happy birthday to Charlotte Dawn, who is turning 10 on November 14th. Happy birthday to Keon, who is turning six on November 14th. Happy birthday to Stella, who is turning six on November 14th. Happy birthday to Lorenzo in Nicaragua, who is turning eight on November 14th. Happy birthday to Lillian, who is turning six on November 15th. Happy birthday to Eloisa Flynn from Melbourne, Australia, who is turning six on November 16th. Happy birthday to Kennedy, who is turning eight on November 17th. Happy birthday to Emmy in the UK, who is turning seven on November 17th, from Mom, Dad, and Winnie. They are so proud of how strong and responsible you are. Happy birthday to Delta Mika from Ottawa, Ontario, who is turning six on November 18th. Mom and Dad are proud of how hard you are working learning English, French, math, and science. Happy birthday to Patrick from Canberra, Australia, who is turning eight on November 18th. To our violin-playing, science-loving biggest brother, we love you to the moon and hope you have a brilliant birthday. And happy 10th birthday to Brayden. Mommy, Daddy, and Ellie love you so much. Happy birthday to you all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Shoutouts and birthday wishes are one way we give thanks to our supporters. If you would like to support us and receive more bedtime entertainment like this, all ad-free, please visit our support page at sleeptightstories.org slash support. Thank you. Pancake is a dog that loves to run and run and to learn outside. His mom and dad think it is time he went to a regular school and today is his first day. When he arrives at the school, he thinks it looks a bit like a castle. When he arrives at his classroom, his teacher tells him to take a seat. He knows this is not going to go well. Pancake the Collie struggles at school. The first rays of the sun shone into Pancake's bedroom and filtered through his drapes with images of spaceships, aliens, and flying super dogs that he got last month when his mother and father fixed up his room for the big change. Pancake didn't need an alarm and didn't even need to be shaken awake in the morning because as soon as he felt the tiniest beam of light from the sun, he would jump out of bed. Sleep and sitting around were too boring. Pancake liked to race, jump, and go do stuff. 
Okay, it's morning. Gotta go, 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 Pancake barked to himself. He ran down the hallway to the kitchen, where he knew his mother would have breakfast ready for him. Good morning, Mom, he said. Good morning, little one. I think you are forgetting something, Pancake's mother said with a big grin. Pancake stood there for a moment, his head turning to the left and then to the right. Then he looked down. He forgot to put his clothes on. Silly clothes. Why do I need to wear clothes anyways, he thought. But he ran back to his room, put on his favorite stinky jeans and a clean shirt, and even went to the bathroom to wash. You never know who you might meet when you are outside. I wouldn't want to have a dirty face. After arriving back into the kitchen in a flash, he asked, So, what delicious breakfast am I having today? I thought you might enjoy some delicious duck-flavored cereal this morning. I cut some apples for you, too. Sounds delicious, Mom. Pancake was not your ordinary pup. He was a small collie mix, a whirlwind of tan fur with spots that seemed to bounce around him as he moved. These spots made him look more like a cheetah than a collie, except that he barked and had long hair. From the moment the sun peeked over the horizon, Pancake was a bundle of energy. He would dart around the garden, his ears flopping up and down as he chased his own tail a game he never seemed to tire of. He loved being outside, and for the past year or so, he and his mother would spend time learning all about the world as they roamed the parks and forests surrounding their village. He played with other puppies his own age, of course, but often preferred to play alone because he was just too super fast. So where are we going this morning, Mummy? Are we going to learn about the various seasons at the park? I think the leaves are changing. Or maybe I could run up and down the trail and see if I can beat my best time. You could take me to the museum too, I guess, but I would rather work in our garden if I had a choice. Pancake, don't you remember? Today is a special day. Today you go to school. Many other pups have been in school for a while, but we wanted to wait to give you more time. School? Without you or Daddy? Pancake said with a look of shock on his face. We talked about this many times, little one. Think of it as like being with your friends this summer on the playground. You will have fun. It will be great. Now, quickly eat because your father will be driving you there soon. Pancake wasn't so sure how much fun it was going to be. But his mother always said that every day was a new day, so he thought he should try. After what seemed like an eternity, Pancake arrived at the school. Though his father's car was super fast, Pancake didn't like driving much because he had to sit still and be all constrained by straps and stuff. One time, though, he stuck his head out the window and felt the wind hitting his hair. And when he stuck his tongue out, it waved like a flag. He got in trouble, though, and for some reason, the window would never open again, no matter how hard he tried. Have a good day, little one, his father said. Pancake thought his father was pretty cool, but he couldn't understand why his voice was so deep and his wasn't. When Daddy talked, his voice sounded like a lion, but when he talked, it sounded more like a squeak. Pancake walked up the steps to the school. It was so big, just like a castle in the books his mother would read to him. He turned around to see if his father had changed his mind. He hadn't. Hello, you must be Pancake. I am so excited to meet you. Pancake turned around to see an older beagle wearing large framed glasses 
waiting for him at the large, impressive doors. They looked like the pictures of doors that led to a castle's dungeon. Really? You're excited to meet me? Pancake said quietly. Of course. All the kids have been looking forward to having you in the classroom. And you know what? What? Today, there is gym class. And you will love it because they are working on track and field. And I heard that you are an excellent runner. Oh, silly me. I haven't even introduced myself. My name is Mrs. Maple. Your class is just down the hallway and to the left. Your homeroom teacher's name is Mrs. Whiskers. You can't miss her. She has a black and white coat. Thank you, Pancake said as he slowly walked through the large, heavy metal doors and into an impossibly tall hallway. He looked right and left to ensure no dragons were in this castle. Pancake had never moved so slowly and had never seen so many kids before either. The hallway was a hive of activity, with dogs of all sizes and breeds bustling about. Pancake arrived at his classroom and poked his nose around the corner of the entryway to see if he was in the right place. Why am I being so shy all of a sudden, he thought. Pancake, come on in. Don't be shy, said Mrs. Whiskers, a large border collie with alert and bright eyes. I'm Mrs. Whiskers. Come on in and have a seat. Seat, Pancake said to himself. I have to sit? I don't know if I know how. Pancake's classroom was a colorful and welcoming space filled with bright posters and cozy corners. There were 15 other kids his age in the classroom. Pancake knew this because he counted them three times before he found his desk. He looked around at all the other kids and tried to imitate how they sat, but it felt so strange. No one was moving, not even their tails. Mrs. Whiskers introduced him, and she started talking about all the things that they were going to learn that day. But he didn't really hear her because he was used to constantly moving. He found the stillness unfamiliar and uncomfortable. It took all his concentration to not run around the classroom and chase his tail. Or... Maybe he could chase one of the other pups around the classroom. That would be fun. He shifted from paw to paw, his eyes darting around the room, seeking something, anything that would justify his desire to move. And then he barked, a really, really loud bark. Then the classroom was quiet and everyone looked at him. Did you have a question, Pancake? Mrs. Whiskers asked. No, sorry, Mrs. Whiskers. Pancake was embarrassed, but he just couldn't help himself. Barking helped him feel more relaxed. Later, during story time, while the other pups sat listening to Mrs. Whiskers' stories, Pancake found it hard to stay still again. He would wiggle and squirm, sometimes letting out excited barks when the stories reached thrilling parts. His classmates would turn and giggle, finding his enthusiasm both amusing and a bit distracting. He was allowed to run around and bark whenever his mommy told him stories at home. What's the big deal? In science class, Pancake was really, really curious. He loved science. Mrs. Whiskers led the class to learn about the stars, the weather, and the wonders of nature. Pancake, fascinated by everything and yet unable to focus, would often end up chasing his tail in circles or playfully pouncing on imaginary creatures. Unfortunately, that's not what you are supposed to do in science class. 
When he learned science with his mother, they did it outside, and he would often take a break to race with squirrels. The biggest challenge for Pancake, however, was during math class. Numbers and figures danced around in his head, and no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't sit still long enough to make sense of them. This often led to moments of frustration, both for Pancake and for his patient teacher. The other pups didn't seem to mind too much. They just thought he was funny. Maybe they needed a break from math, too. Gym class was better, but there were still so many rules. Coach Barker, a Dalmatian with really big muscles, led them through drills before they were allowed to run on the track, and they had to take turns. Pancake could always just run and run and run, when he did get to run, it felt great. He was the fastest in class, and all the other pups would bark at him in enthusiasm. But then it was over, and Pancake knew he would have to go back to class again. As he was leaving, Coach Barker called him over. That was some really great running you did, Pancake. I hope you will consider trying out for the track team you will find it very fun. Uh, thank you, Coach Barker. I like to run. I can see that. We have a few minutes before your last class of the day. Why don't you have a seat? Oh, no. I have to sit again? Am I in trouble? Did I run too fast? Pancake thought. I was like you when I was your age. Pancake looked at the coach with a strange look in his eyes. Yes, <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but I was once a young, energetic pup like you. All I wanted to do was climb, jump, and run. I grew up in the country and came from a family who worked hard outside all day long. So when I went to school, I found it hard. But school is not just about the subjects they teach. Don't get me wrong, science, math, and English are all important. But so are all the other things you learn in school. In class, we need to be calm and attentive, Pancake, Coach Barker said. It's not only about learning from books, but also about learning to be a good friend and a respectful listener. We can't all learn if we are all running in different directions. Focusing in class will help you learn. And I know it's difficult. It was for me. But coach, school is so, 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 uh, I don't know. I just like to learn outside. And when I am forced to stay quiet and sit still, I find it hard to focus. After gym class tomorrow, I'll teach you some things you can do that might help. And I am sure Mrs. Whiskers will too. All good things take time, Pancake, and I am sure you will do great. After school, his father picked him up and dropped him off at home while he went and did some errands. He walked up their pathway and through the door of his house and smelled the delicious scent of dinner. It felt good to be home after what he was sure was the worst day of his life. Right up there with losing his favorite blue squeaky toy. Or when he finally got an ice cream after waiting for hours, it fell down on the ground and melted. He licked it up anyway. How was your day at school, little one? His mother asked. Bad. Why can't I just stay home and learn with you? I already knew much of what the teacher was talking about, and then I would run around more outside and not have to sit in those silly chairs. Your father and I sit in those silly chairs while studying or reading. But you guys are... Mom, I just think I could learn better if I wasn't at school. 
I don't see why I need to be there all day. Can't I just go in the afternoon? Pancake, I understand you love being outside and exploring. But there is much more to school than just the subjects you learn, like math or science. But I can run and play outside and learn a lot from our adventures together. We certainly had a great time together. But school teaches you things that are hard to learn on your own. Like, at school, you learn to get along with others, even if they are very different from you. Like working with others in class? Pancake asked. Exactly. You learn teamwork, how to share, and how to listen to others. These are important skills, little one. You also learn to follow instructions, which will help you do many different things. I guess, but I still don't like sitting still for so long. I know it's hard, but that's another part of learning, developing focus and patience. It's not just about being physically active. It's about training your mind to be calm and attentive when you need to be. Coach Barker said that I can learn to be a good friend and a listener. Yes, and so much more. You're learning how to be a part of a community. Every day, you will become more responsible and understanding. These are things that will help you throughout your life in ways you might not even realize yet. I guess. Remember, every day is a new day. Tomorrow, you get to try it all over again. Just try your best, and I know you will be great. You can learn to sit and focus just like you learn to run fast. I'll try, Mommy, Pancake replied, with a little bit of drool dropping out of his mouth. Mommy, can I have a cookie? I like the liver-flavored ones best. Liver is my favorite snack. And that's the end of this part. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>